Uh, hello, everyone. Welcome to our next session of this universal training, uh, Patreon training and consulting. Uh, our next session is about uh, introduction to soccer road pump and artificial system uh, with Mohammed Allah. Mohammed uh, Allah has 10 years of experience in production technology and artificial lift, uh, his main focus in soccer road pump system and electric summer school pump. Uh, if you will have any questions, you can write them to the chat box and I will read them for a speaker. Also, you can unmute yourself and ask your question to speaker. Um, so the one you can start right now. Okay, welcome everybody. I just will share uh, my screen now. So can you see my screen now? Yes. Yes. Okay, yes. great. Okay, so welcome everybody for our session today. We will focus on soccer root pump uh, system, the basics design and the troubleshooting. So let's start our, with our agenda now. First, we will uh, give a short introduction why we use or select artificial lift, why we need it and uh, how it works. Uh, then we will move to general overview for the soccer root bump, uh, the definition, the advantage and disadvantage. Then will we move to soccer root bump existing component, the surface component and downhole component, and we go in details for each component. Then will we move to uh, system design and selection, best selection for the material. Then will we go to soccer root main bump uh, problems uh, and how to troubleshoot it and give short brief about soccer road monitoring systems. Then we'll go to bump uh, unit inspection, the surface bump unit inspection and the maintenance procedure. Then last but not least uh, to uh, uh, proceed with soccer road care hand and handling procedure for the soccer road itself. So let's start with the introduction to the artificial lift needs. First, we have to know that we have two types of oil well. We have a self-flow oil well, which we can call this a natural flow well. In these types of wells, the reservoir pressure is high enough and strong enough to add energy to flow it to reach surface through the well bore. The other type is non-self-flow, which we can call dead well or depleted well. For better understanding for artificial lift concept, we have to be aware with system performance curve. It is a relationship between the flow rate and bottom hole pressure. It is consisting of two main items, the inflow performance, which describes the flow performance through the formation to well bore. It is a relation between flow rate and bottom hole pressure. At zero flow rate, we will have the static bottom hole pressure or the reservoir pressure. And at zero static bottom hole pressure, we will have the absolute open flow. The other component is vertical lift performance, which describes the flow performance through the well bore, through the tubing to surface intersection between the two components is called the system performance, which describes the well and the operating point and give us the rate, the rate at a certain BW. This is for a natural flow well. So what happens if I have a dead well? So, so as we all know, natural flow well will not last production forever. At certain time, it will be depleted and then it can produce naturally oil or water cut will increase or some back pressure causes the well to cease to flow. In such situation, the intersection is not more valid between the IBR and VLB and, and now, we need artificial lift. So what is the role of artificial lift? Artificial lift will shift the, v, the VLB or vertical lift performance down to intersect with IBR and keep well producing. Artificial lift can be as lift, ESCB, sucker root or jet bump or any other bumping system that can deliver the fluid to service. For better understanding, we now have added well with a certain reservoir pressure, and if we take a, a gradient for the fluid, it will not reach the surface. It will 
be way below the surface. So if we install artificial lift ESP or sucker root pump, this pump will add more energy to the fluid at certain depths. The discharge pressure of the pump will let fluid have sufficient energy to reach the surface to overcome the hydrostatic pressure, the friction, and the well head pressure, and then reach your facility. So this is the role of any artificial lift, is to make a sufficient drawdown from the reservoir pressure and add energy to the fluid to reach the surface. So what is the distribution of different artificial lift type? We have ESP, PCB, root pump, gas lift, and other ways. The sucker root pump, which we will concentrate on in our session, is about 45% of all artificial lift type or lead white. So this is a fast comparison between the different types of artificial lift. For each artificial lift, we can see here the advantage of each one. If we concentrate on root pump or sucker root pump, it can deal with low rates, heavy oil, some sand and low gas, and we will go in deep details for this. Second item, we will have a brief overview for sucker root pump. So what's the definition of sucker root pumping system? Sucker pumping system consisting of downhole and surface component that allow pressure to be sufficient to drive the fluid to surface. The surface bar containing from surface unit that is transfer the rotation mode from the motor to up and down movement since the downhole com component consists of roads and downhole pump roads that transfer the motion from surface to the downhole pump. The downhole pump is a positive displacement pump that creates a drawdown for the fluid and allow the fluid to reach surface. We will go in, de in deep details for each component. So what is the best application for our system, for the sucker root system? The first of all, it will be a vertical well because we have roots installed in the well and inside the tubing. So if I have a vertical well, it will be the best application because there, if there is any deviation for the well, I will have a contact in, in, the, in the upstroke and downstroke between the roots and the tubing and it is not the better. And we will we describe this problem later. In shallow and in moderate depths, well, because the more depths we have, the low rate will you gain because of the loads. Low gas oil ratio, because gas is one enemy of the sucker root pump, because it can cause gas lock for the downhole pump. Also, ensure well, because it's the best application to have a sucker root pump onshore because it needs large space which may be not available in offshore wells. Also in low sand production wells because sand may cause the downhole pump to stuck because it is, because it is consisting of moving parts. Also an uncorrosive fluid because pump and roads are metals and they can be badly affected by a corrosive fluids. Also in low water cut production because high water cut may cause some also corrosion or corrosion. Also in dead wells because, because the surface equipment or the well head equipment for the sucker root can have, uh, have a limited uh, pressure capacity. For example, it can only handle five or 600 BSI. If I have a strong reservoir with a high reservoir pressure, it can cause some safety impacts. So what is the advantage of the sucker root? It is a very simple because it can run with a simple design and it can long life with a good performance. And it is also applicable for remote application because the low maintenance it is needed. Also, it have a strong drawdown capabilities because it can run in very depleted well and in very low, at very low BWF. It is also a positive displacement to bump, so in so it is not affected by a back pressure and it can work against any well head pressure. 
also it is economic because of low operating cost and it is also flexible and it can work with production challenges challenge from 30 barrel to almost 4,000 barrel. So moving now to this advantage of our system, we have some limitation in production with depths as we mentioned before. And it is also consisting of mechanical moving parts, so it needs continuous maintenance and continuous care. Also, we have some environmental impacts in pollution and in oil spills because of the, the, the sucker road. Wellhead has something called stuffing box, and we will go in deep with this later. Also, bore well control because, in case of high pressure, high wellhead pressure. It can sustain, it needs continuous tightening for the stuffing box. And it also may some problem of tubing wear because of the friction between the roads and the tubing. Also, it may be, not be economic in case of very deep wells, like we will mention next. Moving now to the sucker road system component. As we mentioned, we have two parts, the surface part, and the downhole part. First, we have the pumping unit. This pumping unit consisting of the prime mover, motor, and the pumping unit itself. And you will go in details, in deep details for the component of surface unit. Then we have the sucker road steering itself, which consists of roads and other accessories. So the downhole pump, which creates the drawdown and provides energy for the fluid. Then we have the bumping head assembly, the wheel head that is sufficient for the sucker root. And finally, we have prime mover and safety production like pressure and vibration switches. So let's start with bumping unit, the surface unit. Surface unit is used to convert the high rotary speed from the electric motor to reciprocating motion up and down strokes. It is driven by a VSD or control controller that is located beside the unit. So what is the component of the surface unit? We have the prime mover or the motor that, that is run on an electric power and provides the rotation movement. It is connected to the gearbox via some belts over here and we have a belt cover. That the gearbox is connected to the crank arm and the crank arm we have here the auxiliary weights or the counter weights. And we have here the crankshaft. The crankshaft is connected to the Batman arm. Batman arm is connected to the walking beam and walking beam is connected to the horse head. Horse head is moving up and down during the up and down strokes. It is also connected to the carrier bar. Carrier bar is carrying the load and it is carrying the bullish through. This is the wheel head for the sucker road system, and then the motion is transferred to the downhole. So if we go in deep details for the pumping unit types, we have three types. We have ABI beam pumps, which is a standard one, and we have a special beam pump units, which is for a special applications, and we have non-beam units. If we start with ABI beam pumps, we have well, it's the conventional unit or the rear base mounted unit. It is the most commonly and the most widely spread surface units because it is the original or the first units that we used in these systems. In these systems, the equilibrium will be in the middle, as we can see in the picture, and the load will be in the front. The load here is mentioned to the road load and the fluid load. Then the force will be in the back, which is the force that is run the units, which means by the gearbox and the motor. The second type is front mounted base unit, or we can, as we can call it the Mark II. Mark II, we have the equilibrium at the back, as we see in the picture. The force will be in the middle here, as we can see the gearbox and the motor in the middle. Then the load will be in the front. As we can see, the horse head here is the front of the unit. It is a high torque unit and can be used in very deep well. 
we have two other types like enhanced geometry unit this is we can see it is a mix it between the two types the rear base and the front mounted because we have here some phase angle and the crank that is enhance the capability of the unit and make it used in deep wells. We have also air balanced unit. In these units, we don't use a counterbalance, but we use air chamber to provide the balance instead of gearbox and the counterweights. Moving to special beam bumps. We have some special units that is used in special applications like low profile units it is used when the height is critical and we can't use a high surface unit so we use a small height surface to drive my well and also we have the road runner unit it is a special unit that's installed on a truck on a moving vessel to be used on a different well location and it is mostly mostly used during the testing of the well. Moving to the non-beam pump units, we have the Rotaflex. Rotaflex is a special pump with a very high stroke length. Stroke length can reach 366 inch, which is a quite high in regard, regarding to the conventional type ones. Moving now to the ABI standard for the nomenclature for the unit. We have a letter at the first of the bump, which is referring to the unit type. If it is C, for example, it will be conventional M, it will be Mark II. Then we have a number here. Number is referring to the gearbox reducing torque in thousand of bound inch. Then the next number, it will be the maximum structure of the load of the bump, or we can see the maximum load of the polished road itself. The last number is referring to the maximum stroke length of the units. As we can see here, in the crank arm, we have a three holes. Each hole have a specific stroke length from the maximum one to the minimum one. Each unit has a three stroke length can be operated on depending on my well potential. So for better understanding, if we have RM 912, 365, 192, it means that the unit type is reverse mark. And the gearbox rating is 912,000 bound inch torque. And the structure rating for the unit is 36500 bound. And the maximum stroke length in this unit is 192 inch. So this is a description of the surface unit itself. Moving now to the second item, it is the sucker rod string itself. It consists of the sucker rods, which is have a standard length of 25 or 30 feet. The function of these rods is to transfer the up and down movement from the surface to the down hole. As we can see here, the first type of roads is ABI sector roads. It have different sizes, it ranging from half inch to one and one over eight inch. It can be three quarter, seven over eight, one inch. This is the sizes of the sucker roads and it can, you can merge between two or three sizes in your application or in your well. Also, each route have a grid. You can use a grid K, grid C, or grid D. Different grids are referring to the different tensile strengths of the units. If we can see grid K, it is 85,000 bound as a tensile strength. It can be used in low loads and low corrosive environment. Also, grid C have a higher tensile strength. It can range from 900 to 150,000 can used in medium loads and in non corrosive environment. Grid D, it's much higher and can used in medium to heavy loads and some, si some types of corrosion, as we can mention the grid D90. This is for ABI sucker roots type. We have another type of sucker roots, it is a non ABI 
sakar roots grids like ultra high strengths or like fiberglass roots fiberglass roots is a modern technology to be used in sucker root and it is not much spreaded around the world for the ultra high strengths we have some grids like nine in 97 is 88 and it have a high, very high tensile strength can reach 150,000 and it is used in extra deep loads condition. Moving now to some accessories that is used in the road string, we have root couplings. Root couplings, as we can see in this picture, it is used to connect between two roads. It is a coupling that connect one road to the second road. And we have also crossovers. Crossovers it is used to connect between two roads of different sizes. As I can mention, it can connect between one inch, three over four, or between seven over eight and three quarter root. Also, we have bony roots. Bony roots is the same as the original sucker roots, but it is a short length. It can be two feet, four feet, up to 10 feet, and it is used in spacing in or spacing out the string during installation. Then we have another component in the root string, which is sinker bar. Sinker bar, it is a high weight sucker roots. It is used to keep the root string in tension as it, because it is installed in the deepest point of the string to add additional, additional weight to the string and keep it under tension to centralize the road string and avoid the road buckling during up and down movement. Also, we have a stabilized bar. Stabilizer, stabilizer bar is used direct above the bump to centralize the valve road guide above the bump and to create a stiffness to protect the valve road guide from corrosion or from direct contact with the tubing. Also, we have some application of road guides and centralizers. Road guides, road guides is a rubber or a plastic element that is installed on the road itself in the high dog leg interval, maybe much higher than 2.5 dog leg, to avoid the direct contact between the metal of the road and the metal of the tubing. So the roads the road guides itself it will be where instead of direct contact between the metal of road and metal of tubing and protect creating a cracks in the tubing and causing tubing holes also we have the polished road which is the first item of the road string at surface that is connecting the downhole roads with the bumping units itself it is located at the bottom of carrier bar there is different sizes from the polished root. It can be one and one over eight, one and a half, and so on. Moving now to the third component of the road string, it is the downhole pump itself. So downhole pump, it's the tool that creates the drawdown and force the fluid to move up through the tubing and provides the required discharge pressure to allow fluid to overcome the hydrostatic pressure, friction, and well head pressure to reach your facility. It is a positive displaced bump, as we mentioned before, so it can withstand against any high pressure. This is some pictures of the downhole bump. This is the top of the bump, and this is the bottom of the bump. So what is the component of the downhole bump? We have the barrel. Barrel is the main component of the downhole bump. It is a cylindrical shaped. The length of the barrel can be reached 20 feet. Then we have the plunger. The plunger is the moving part inside the barrel that is creates the high discharge pressure. Also, we have the, the traveling valve and the stationary valve. The traveling valve is attached to the plunger and the stationary valve, which is not moving, is attached to the barrel. Then we have the seating assembly, which is at the bottom of the bump. And as we can see in next slide, it can be at the bottom of the bump or at the top. Then we have the valve road, 
which is connecting the blunger to the road steering at the top of the bump. And we have some other accessories we, we, we will discuss. So now what's the types of the downhole bump? We are speaking now of the most important component of the system, which is the downhole bump. We have a tubing bump. Tubing bump is most used in wells that have a high potential as it can reach up to 3,000 barrel per day and it can handle some sand production. But it is, should be attached to the tubing. So the tubing bump is attached to the tubing itself. And if you want to retrieve the string, you, you want to retrieve the, the bump, you have to retrieve the tubing. So this can be considered as one of the advantage of this type because you have to utilize our cover rig if you need to replace the bump. And it is also quite high expensive if we compare it with the other types and it can use in shallow wells because it cause a high drawdown with high rates. So it can cause a high loads and it need a high and bigger surface unit. The second type is casing bump. Casing bump from its name, it is installed inside the casing itself without using a tubing. It also used in large size, can reach five and a half inch, and it can cause some problems like damage in the casing and road fishing will be challenging. And also you will have a poor reservoir monitoring because you can't detect the fluid level and you can't detect the BWF during the running. The third type is road bump, which is commonly used. It is inserted bump. You run in hole with the tubing that contain a seating nipple. Then you run in hole later with the bump and the roads. So it is widely used because it can retrieve and run many times on the same tubing using only a bowling unit without need for work over rig, which save cost and time. As we mentioned, we have two types of seating mechanism for the bump. It can be used from the top of the bump, as we can see here, which is called top hold down. And it can be seated in the tubing from the bottom, as we can see here, which is called bottom hold down. So the hold down types for the bump, the hold down, it is the part of the, the downhole bump that is fit the downhole bump inside the tubing, or we can see inside the nipple. We have two types. We have cup type, as we can see here. This is the hole down which is attached to the bump, and it is the nipple which is attached to the tubing. The ceiling will be using these cups, which is from a special plastic type or rubber type that prevent escaping of the fluid downhole and it keep it going up. So this part is attached to the downhole bump and the downhole bump and this part is seating inside the seating nipple which is attached to the tubing. The second type is a mechanical type. This is the hole down with the attach attached to the bump and it's the nipple which is attached to the tubing. So the seal is causing because of this ring inside this profile. So this is the two types of the seating mechanism of the bump inside the tube, cup type and mechanical type. Moving now to the ABI standardization for the nomenclature of the bump. Each bump have a special description from the ABI to know the, the, the size and the dimensions of each bump. If we can start with the first number, it is referring to the tubing size. If we have 25, it means that it is a tubing is 270. If it is 30, it means that the tubing is three and a half. So the first number is referring to the tubing size that is used with this bump. The second number is referring to the bump size. If it is 225, it means that the, uh, the ID of the barrel is 2.25 inch and so on. If it is 175, it means that the ID of the bump is 1.75 inch. The second 
the following letters is referring to some functions and some description for the bump itself. R, it means that it is inserted. If it is D, it means that it's tubing bump. As we mentioned, we have two type, inserted type and the tubing type. The R type or the inserted type is the most used. H is referring to the weights of the barrel itself. It can be H, which is heavy wall, W, it is a thin wall, and so on. Then we have A or B. A, it is about the seating mechanism of, or the seating type of the bump. It can be from the top or from the, bo the bottom. A, it will be the top, and B, it will be the bottom, as we mentioned before. The last letter is referring to the seating mechanism, C or M. C, it means that is a cup type, and M, it means that is a mechanical type. Then will we have a three numbers. The first number is the length of the barrel, the length of the blunger, and the length of the extension. Extension, it is a tube attached to the barrel itself to increase its length, its length to fit for high stroke lengths. So we have to take care while describing the bump because each bump has a special characteristics and a special description to fit for your will. So that's for the downhole bump description. Now we will move to the bumping mechanism, how it's work. As we mentioned, bump, it is running by upstroke and downstroke. Let's he see here the first, the upstroke movement. During the upstroke, the plunger is moving up inside the barrel. As we mentioned, the plunger contains a traveling valve and it is the moving part. And the barrel is the stationary part, which is attached to the tubing at its con con containing the stationary valve, which is not moving. It is stable in its, in its place. So in the up movement or, air or in the upstroke, the valve here in the blunger or in the traveling valve will be closed and the stationary valve will be open. And there is a suction here which causes the fluid from the well bore to enter the bump here. Then in downstroke, the traveling valve bore will be opened and the stationary valve will be closed, causing the pressure here to be much higher and force the fluid to go up in the blunder. Then repeating the upstroke, this valve will be closed and the fluid here will traveling up to the tubing and so on till the fluid reach the surface. So this is the mechanism of the downhole bump work during the upstroke and the downstroke. This positive dis displacement causes a high discharge pressure at the top of the bump and allow fluid to go up through the tubing. We have now a special type of bumps, which is a bump anchor, which have a special applications. In this type of the bump, we don't need a seating label. We just used an anchor attached to the bottom of the bump and it can seat inside any location of the tubing without using a seating nipple. The main application for it, it can used in a cracked hole. If I have a tubing hole at certain depths, I can retrieve the old bump, attach the bump with a bump anchor and install the bump above this crack or above this hole and produce the well. It also can be used in a, in a well that have a lost bump. I can just punch above it and utilize the bump anchor, which delays the need for work over to retrieve the tubing. So this is for the type of the bump anchor. Now moving to the bump head assembly, the well head of the sucker road, which is very important to be well known for each of us. First, we have the KTH flange, which is number one here. It is installed above the tubing head spool and it is carry the weight of the tubing, which is carrying the downhole bump downhole here. So tubing is attached to the KTH flange using the sealing mechanism over here. Number two, we have a bump adapter, which is attaching the tubing part because this is the appeared part of the tubing, 
with the BOB. The BOB is used to control the will while will is shutting because the BOB is only function while no up or down stroke while the bump is shut off. So it can seal around the bulged root and keep the fluid in downhole and prevent any leak from the oil. Number four here, we have a stuffing box, which is consisting of a cap and the body. Inside this cap, we have some type of rubber that is sealed around the bulged root while the up and down stroke. So POB is sealing around the bulged root in stationary condition, and stuffing box is sealing around the bulged root in running situation in up and down stroke. Then we have number five, which is deconnection, which is allow the flow to move from downhole to the flow line. We have number six, which is the flow line, production line, and we have some pressure gauge and venting line. Number nine is a connection from annulus to the flow line to allow continuous venting from the trap gas in annulus and this is the tubing head spool. So this is a quick brief for the bump head assembly or the well head assembly for sucker. We also have some safety protections for the sucker root pump system. We have a pressure switch, pressure switch like this, which is installed on the flow line or on the well head assembly and seated to a certain value of pressure. If the pressure exceeds this value, it will send a signal to the drive and shut down the unit in case of any unexpected situation that cause pressure to be high. Because if the pressure exceeded this value and bump didn't shut down, it will continue running. And because it is a positive displacement, it's causing pressure at will head to be a very high value exceeding 1,000, 2,000 and can cause severe damage. So it is a very important protection to be installed on the sucker root. Also, we have a vibration switch, which is detect any vibration in the surface unit and shut down the unit immediately. Also, we have a stopping box and bulge root as we mentioned in the previous slide and also have some protection for the electric motor under load and overload. Overload is seated at certain current value. When it is exceeded this value, the bump is shut down. In this case, maybe the downhole bump is stuck. So it will draw a high current. So the unit should be shut down to avoid road parting problem. The same in the under load. If the current is very low, bump also should be shut down because it may be an indication of road parting problem and you have to stop the bump to avoid running against no flow conditions that may cause a wear to the stuffing box and cause a severe oil leak at surface. Also, we have a bump of controller, controller which can shut down in case of bump failure is very low. Also, we have a load cell which is installed on the carrier bar that transfers the load to the controller to monitor the well and to draw the surface and downhole card as we will mention in the next slide. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can. Yes. Yes, yes, it's clear. Okay. We also have a road rotator. Road rotator which is allow the rotation of the road during the up and down stroke to avoid wearing or the low side of the road. So if there is a contact between the road and the tubing or contact between the road guide and the tubing, this wear or this contact will be a 360 degree. So it, the wear will be equivalent from the all sides to avoid the wear to be on one side and causing a tubing wear. So moving now to system design. 
how I can design the system of the sucker root and bit selection for the material. First of all, I have to utilize some information. I need to know the target rate to detect the bump size and the tubing size. Also, I have to know the pump seating depth because I want to know my loads and I want to select the suitable service unit. Also, I need to have the current completion to know if it is continued. A tubing anchor, KTH, or tubing hunger. Also, the vision survey, it is essential. Thing need to be to be identified to know the interval at which we have a deviation survey, at, at have a dog leg to install a guided routes to avoid tubing wear. Also, I have to know where is my dynamic fluid level to know what is my intake pressure or to allow me to set the bump below this dynamic level. Also, I need to know the well head pressure to select the best stuffing box rubber type. So now we will go fast for a sucker root design using a software, which is s -root. We can go just to allow each one to be aware with the design. s -root, it is supplied by Lufkin. It is the most widely provider for the sucker root equipment system. If you start a S road program, it will give you the first window to select your language and select if you want to edit a pre-designed well or to create a new case. Then the next window will be the company name and well type for the naming of your well and to select if your well is a vertical or deviated. Then the next window containing some required information. The bump depth, you have to provide the bump depth of the sucker road to software. And you have to select the bump diameter that will, you will use. You can select a special one and then modify bending on the result. Or you can select the bump diameter which is available in your stock. Then you have to provide the bump efficiency. You can make it 80 or 90. Then you have to provide intake pressure, which we put it as minimum to be 100 psi, which is the minimum required for the sucker root to work properly. Then you have to insert the tubing size and tubing anchor depth and the required pressure at will hit and the tubing gradient. You can make it depending on the gradient of your fluid. Then if you Select here a specify root design. This will allow you to put your downhole root root type, alloy, and the size and the interval. If you highlight here the sucker root, S root itself, it will detect the number of guides and show you the interval at which you have to install roads. This is to select the road string itself. In the same drop list, we can select another type, which is ABI standard, and this road will understand that you want to comply with the ABI standard. If you have, for example, bump 1.5, you and the tubing and the road itself five over eight and half. So the distribution will be 56% of the road string was five over eight and 43 is half and so on. If you select S road steel road design, you will enter just the road type, the alloy itself, and the maximum and minimum diameters of the road that you have. And if you want to include a sinker bar, and the S root itself will predict or will select the proper road string taper type that is suitable for your will to allow the tensile strength in each interval to be the same. For example, the one the top of one inch and the top of seven over eight and the top of three quarter to have the similar load 
of the road. For example, it will be the same to be 87 of H tensile strength during running. Then you have to select the pumping unit itself and provide it is working clockwise or counterclockwise. Then you have to provide the horsepower of the electric motor and the stroke per minute or the speed of the pump. Then you have to supply the deviation survey of the wheel to allow us to predict the interval that we ha will have a high side loads and to advise you to use a molded or guided loads. This is a sample of reports that we can obtain from the s -root. We can here found that the prime mover load is 41, which I have to take care to avoid overloading the prime mover. We see here the type of the surface unit, the stroke lens, and the load on the bomb unit. It is occupied by 87% of the maximum structure load of the unit. And here we have the load on the gear reducer, which is 56 and 55 in case on balance. Balancing the unit is some things that is required for each unit to balance between the ampere that is drawn by the motor in upstroke and in downstroke, and it can be described or to, can be illustrated later. Then you have here the road string that the S road selected. You have a tapered string, one inch, seven over eight, and three quarter. Then he utilized one inch tubing as a sinker bar to allow tubing string to be under tension. And here he shows the loading of the loads as a percent from the maximum tensile strength of the road, which is be accepted because the maximum will be 88, which is accepted because. The designer selected the tenacity ultra high strength type, which is non ABI, but is the most of the has the highest tensile strength. Then the software predicts the flow rate at surface. It is uh, 200 at 100 efficiency and 180 at 90% as efficiency of the bomb. And also in this slide, you can see that s root predict the intervals that have a high side loads. Any high side loads that over than 50, you can see that s root is advised you to use a guided route. And this guide route should have a three guides pair route. This is a, an advice to avoid a tubing here. And you can see here some curves that describe the performance or to predict the surface and downhole car and the loading over the gearbox over down and up stroke. Moving now to the main problems of the sucker road and how to troubleshoot it. So we have a golden rule. If you have accurate input data and you have a proper design and the proper material selection, you will have long run life less troubleshooting required and less oil development. Two enemies we have in sucker root system, gases inside the system and deviation. As we mentioned, gas will cause a gas lock and deviation will cause a tubing wear or can result finally in parted root. The first and most common problem is a fluid bound. Fluid bound while bump is running up and down stroke, the bump fillage is not full. So, the bump is not, com is not completely filled with the fluid. So during the downstroke, the plunger will move in gas, then suddenly hit a fluid. So it causes vibration and if it is repeated and long time, it can cause the problems like a uh, root parting. The impact of it, it can cause increase in vibration at the unit and it can damage the teeth of the gearbox and it can cause a premature failure for the tube. The second problem is gas bounding or gas lock. If I have a fluid bound problem and I kept it without any optimization, it can lead to a gas lock and the bump itself can lose its function and production can stop from this well. So the troubleshooting 
for the gas bounding and gas lock or even the flow down is to improve gas venting through anulus. As we mentioned, we have to connect the anulus to the flow line. And also you can maximize or increase the slope length and minimize the, st the stroke per minute or the speed. It will be very effective in case of gases. Also during the installation, you have to install the bump below the perforation. If you know, you will face some gases problem. Also installing gas anchor or gas separator. As we can see here, the fluid changing its direction before entering the bump, which is allow the gas to be separated in the anulus and the fluid only will enter the downhole bump. Third common problem, which is resulting from deviation of the highest uh, high ten uh, tension of the roads, it is a uh, road failure or road parting. Three types of this problem, tensile failure, that it caused the road to be filled in a bottleneck shape due to the road elongation. If you use improper road type or you exert more tension, for example, to free bump stuck and cause the road to be parted. So troubleshooting for this problem is to select the better type of the road and the better alloy which is suitable for your application and never to exceed the allowable road rating during trial to freeze the stock. Another type is corrosion, which is common in the presence of cor corrosive fluids and to troubleshoot or to avoid this problem, you have to use corrosion inhibitor. The third type, which is most commonly, it is a fatigue or mechanical failure during the running of the sucker road itself during a lot of cycle. You can see that there is a small crack that will be propagated in the roads with time and even ended with a road parting with time if you exceeded the limits of the roads of the sucker road. So these are some reasons for the road failure problems in proper makeup. When you have over torque on the road, it will be ended with a parted road or you have a severe flow down without solving this problem or exceeding the road limit or if you have a manufacturer Defects use, you will also have these problems. Also, if you used old roads without inspection or you used uh, this, this technique in a dog, high dog leg, well, it will cause the same problem. So, what's the troubleshooting for this problem? Is to follow the ABI handling procedure during installation and using the guided roads in interval with high dog leg and also never exceed the limit of the roads. And you can also optimize the running parameter of the, the system if you expect some problems like it. Another common problem, which is a tubing wear, which is also related to the deviation, which is a tubing crack or a tubing wear. If the tubing is not in tension, as we can see in this picture, so during the upstroke and downstroke of the roads, it will be direct contact with the tubing and causing a tubing wear. This problem impact will cause a frequently work over and it will increase the operating cost, increasing the material consumption and also causing a loss in production. How to minimize this problem? You have to utilize the tubing under tension using a tubing anchor, which is fixed to the casing and the KTH is carrying the tubing, making the tubing itself under tension to it is a straight, so no contact between the road and the tubing itself. Now we will move to the sucker road monitoring. How can I monitor the sucker road itself and know that it is running in normal condition or I can detect if there is a problem in the bump itself? Any sucker road unit have a controller, as we mentioned. This controller controls the speed of the motor and showing the running parameter, stroke minute per minute and stroke length. This controller have a screen that this screen shows two curves. As we can see here, we have the upper curve, which describes the loads distribution of the gearbox. So this curve is describing the surface unit performance or especially the gearbox performance. This is the position or this is the stroke lens and this is the loop. So this curve is a relation between the 
stroke length and the load at each point. So this is the typical shape of the surface car. If I have a running wheel, and this curve is appeared on the screen, so wheel is running fine, especially if I have these point inside the curve. So this wheel is running fine. The below curve is showing the performance of the downhole pump itself. This is during the upstroke, and this is during the downstroke. If the if I have a full card like this, it means that the downhole is running fine. For better understanding, we have here the upstroke of the bump. The plunger is moving up here from point A to B. So from point A to B, it is a full card. And in downstroke, from C to D, also it is a full card. So it is, this is the shape of the full healthy downhole bump. These shapes, from these shapes, I can interpret the running second root system line card, and I can see if I have a problem or will is running properly. This is the full bump or when bump is running healthy. This is when bump have a flowing, will have a natural flow, or if I have a parted root. These indicating a sticking in a specific position of the downhole bump. These bump hitting in up or down. Here a flow of friction. Here gas interference. Here drag tubing movement. Worn in barrel flow with bound. Worn in standing bulb and here worn in traveling bulb. So this is a scheme for quick interpretation if I have a problem and it indicates the status of the will for quick intervention. We have now some quick video that can show us how, how I can see the download or the dynacard of the will. We have a full bump now. Bump is running very healthy and the flow while the flow is going up. So this indicating the downhole bump is running fine. If I have a gas interference here, as we can see, this is gas is inside the bump. Here, gas is going up. So the card is not full, which is indicating I have a gas problem. I have to intervene, even increasing the stroke lens or even bending the anodes. Another problem here is a fluid bound which is means the bump is not completely filled with the fluid. And during the movement down of the blunger, it will move in gas, then suddenly hit the fluid, which is causing vibration. And this vibration can cause a problem. This also showing a tubing tagging may indicate that the, during the downstroke, the traveling valve itself hits the stationary valve which is a very important to be intervened and to solve this problem while increasing the stroke lens. This also bump of controller, which means that bump will, will run and keep running as long as it is a completely filled with fluid. Once it's bump village with which is detected by the loads in the controller is drops in certain value, which is put to the controller, the bump will be off. Here we can see the bump is working. Then the bump failure is dropped with up and down stroke. So at certain value, here the surface unit is shut down because the surface detected that the bump is not filled with, completely filled with the fluid. So it stopped. Once the bump is completely filled, it back again to work and so on. So this to show us how the controller identify the downhole card and how can I make a proper interpretation for the downhole card shape and to judge the bump unit if it is working properly or I have to intervene and solve a specific problem. Moving now to bump unit inspection, inspection and maintenance procedure. As we all know, it is a mechanical moving part. 
so I have to take care for the maintenance of the unit. We have three types of maintenance. We have daily, monthly, and six monthly inspection. In daily, we have a golden rule, look, listen, and apply. I have to look to the unit overall. If I have something is not aligned, I have to intervene. If I listen and I can see noise from the gearbox or something, I have to stop the unit and solve this problem. Apply once I can notice something is abnormal or it is not working properly. I have to intervene and stop the unit and fix the problem. Monthly, which is the main important here, is to check the oil level in the gear reducer or the gearbox because it is have to be valid and have to be sufficient to provide a sufficient cooling and lubrication for the gearbox. And every six months, I have to grease all the bearing, especially the center bearing and the crank bearing and the equalizing bearing to confirm well it's in good shape. This picture shows us a catastrophic when I don't care with the maintenance of the surface unit. I have here a damaged unit because of not greasing the bearing of the unit, which causes the unit to be breaked down. Another item, which is sucker root handling procedure, is very important. It's very important to take care for the sucker root itself when moving to the rig site or during storing. For example, when I utilize a forklift, I have to use a spreader bar and carry or transfer the roots with this shape, not with this shape. Also, while storing, we have to install some spacer between the layer of roots to avoid metal to metal contact, even while storing to avoid any bending or any buckling for the roots. Also, while making up or laying down the roots, it should be hand to hand, not from the two end of the root because it can cause a long bending of the roots and it can cause premature failure for the root. So it was a quick slide for the best practice handling for the sucker roots itself. So that's all for our session today and hope it is satisfy your expectation. So if I'm ready if you have any questions. Thank you so much for this valuable session, Mr. Abdullah. Um, I hope this helped to our uh, participants because the presentation was very well about, about this topic. Uh, if anyone has any questions, you can ask them or you can write them to the chat box. I will write uh, read them for speaker, Mr. Allah. Okay, welcome for any question. Yes, please don't hesitate about that. Uh, it's only one question, Jay Muhammad. Uh, how much is the value of uh, tension for the tubing during the installation of Sakharov pump? Yes, it is a good question. As we mentioned, we have a problem of a tubing wear or a tubing crack. Tubing crack is caused because of the continuous friction between the root and between the tubing in up and down strokes. So I have to take care for two points. The first point is to make the tubing attention to ensure it is straight from the surface to the tubing anchor without any buckling or without any deviation. And to ensure the root string itself is under tension by utilizing a sinker bar at the bottom. So I have the tubing attention, root string attention. So during the upstroke and downstroke, the tubing will not be in contact with the roots. And if it is a contact, I will install a guided root, which will prevent the direct contact between metal and metal and prevent a tubing, whole tubing crack, or even prevent or delay a parted root and increase the run life of the pump. So any other, another question? Uh, 
Oh, if there is not any questions, if you want, Ms. Allah, we can continue. No, Mr. Allah, are you hearing me or? Yes, I can hear you. Yeah, if there is not any questions, if you want, we can finish it. So I didn't receive any question right now. So we can end the session now if no more questions and the material itself would be sent via WhatsApp for your reference. Yes. Okay. Thank you so much for your time. Everyone. You are welcome. Welcome, bro.